Shalom, friends. Robert Gotzelig here from the Friends of Israel Gospel Ministry. The last time we got together, we concluded the 11th chapter in the book of Zechariah, making our way through to the end of the book. And there we were looking at uh, Israel's shepherd and how Zechariah was acting out the role of a shepherd. And there we had seen glimpses and how that pointed to the rejection of, of Israel's shepherd, the Messiah, of, of Yeshua. And uh, we talked about those things. And if you haven't looked at the, those last Sermon Bite videos, I just encourage you, friends, to go back. It was a really good study. But today we're going to be moving forward into chapter 12. And here we are in the beginning of chapter 12. And as always, if you have your Bibles handy, you're going to want to turn with me today to Zechariah chapter 12. And I'm going to begin by reading verse 1. It says, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord. This is the second burden. You remember from our study, the first burden was in chapter 9, when the uh, children of Israel, really, they stood in awe, watching Alexander the Great conquer his way all the way through to Egypt and back. And yet God promised in chapter uh, 9 there, in verse 8, that he would spare Jerusalem. And that's one for the history books, friends. Indeed, Jerusalem was spared. So here we come into chapter 12 here, and this is the second burden. This is a, it's speaking of like a burden, like something very heavy. And in this particular, it's a heavy stone. And let's just keep reading here. Uh, the burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretch, stretches forth the heaven and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Here, speaking of how awesome and how mighty and how wonderful and powerful the Lord is, the creator of all things here. And as surely as he created this world and created you and I, friends, this is going to come to pass too. what we're reading here in Zechariah, in which he wrote 2,500 years ago. Let's continue to read the burden here. Behold, God says, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. Here is this cup of trembling. We're told that Jerusalem is going to be. And the nations are led by Antichrist. They are going to come. And they are going to drink out of this cup of reeling. This cup of trembling. And they're going to be like a drunken man. You, you ever try reasoning with somebody that's drunk? That's what the nations are going to be. They're going to be intoxicated with power to try to come against Jerusalem. As, the, as I mentioned, the nations are going to be led by Antichrist to come. And they're going to try to wipe out God's people. They're going to try to come against Jerusalem. And we, we're here, we, we see here exactly what God says, though. He's going to come against them. Look here, if you will, friends. It says in verse 3, And in that day God says, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, and all that burden themselves uh, with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. What's with Jerusalem here? That's all we hear in the news. We hear about, you know, all the uproar of President Trump moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And we see the nations are just, um, it's like we can already see glimpses of this. They're intoxicated with power, trying to divide God's land. They're trying to pressure the, the Jewish people into making a peace with people that will not recognize their right to exist. And, and, and this, speaking of 2,500 years ago, when Jerusalem lay in ruins, Zechariah is telling us exactly what would happen in the tribulation period in that day, speaking of the time of Jacob's trouble. And uh, right towards the end here, we know that God is going to defeat Israel's enemies. But what's with Jerusalem? We know in Ezekiel 5.5, 5, God says he's placed Jerusalem at the center of the world. Friends, he's placed his name there forever. And Satan hates that. And Satan wants to try to destroy everything that God loves. And God loves the Jewish people. And God loves Jerusalem. And Satan is there only to cause uh, havoc and to, to try to thwart the things in which God has said in his word. So it makes God out to be a liar and then Satan can't be judged. And as I've mentioned before, that's the crux of the whole matter. And here he's got the, all the nations. God has allowed them and he's drawing them into, into that, that wine press we read about in Isaiah 63 and Revelation 19. And that wine press, God will trample down his enemies. And look here, it says here in verse 4, In that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open my eyes upon the house of Judah 
and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. Verse six. And in that day, I will make the governors of Judah like a heart, hearth of fire among the wood and like a torch of fire in a sheaf. And they shall devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Friends, God is supernaturally going to give Israel the ability to stand strong. Her enemies are going to be just like falling before her as the Lord is coming against Israel's enemies, against his enemies, those that have vowed to destroy his people. You know, um, people want to say, where's the United States? Where's Canada in Bible prophecy here? Well, right here, God says all nations he's going to gather one day. That includes Canada. That includes the United States. The United States, Israel's best friend, especially under President Trump. And here we're going to see that God, even in this period of time, there will be no nations that are going to be friendly to the Jewish people, but all are going to come against them. And, uh, you know, I think of uh, Joel chapter 3, verse 2, where God says the exact same thing. He says he's going to gather all nations to battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. That's that Kindron Valley. If you're standing on the Mount of Olives, looking across the Kindron Valley, that Valley of Jehoshaphat onto the Temple Mount, where you see the Dome of the Rock there. Well, there will be a third temple there at that time. But God's going to gather all the nations to battle there. And, um, and God will destroy all of Israel's enemies. Look at verse 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. In that day, there again, speaking of that day of the Lord, in that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. Well, who is that angel of the Lord? We read about that uh, in previous studies, the angel of the Lord or, or pre-incarnate appearances of the Messiah. And there, here he is again. He is defeating and protecting his, well, he's defeating Israel's enemies, but protecting his people. And in verse nine, and it shall come to pass in that day, I will seek to destroy all nations that come against Jerusalem. Friends, the world is intoxicated as, there's, as, there's, as they begin to drink this cup. You know, in your news headlines, you can see all the time, we can see the big uproar over Jerusalem. You know, uh, I think of uh, uh, the, the Palestinians who are intoxicated with power. Even though Israel has sovereignty over the Temple Mount, uh, we know that the, uh, they, they have given a, 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 an amount of control to the Jordanian Waif, who looks after the holy sites. And, and they, it's like they, they don't want the Jewish people there, obviously. And the world seems to be siding with the Palestinians. But when I look at God's word here, it says clearly that God's going to gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. And in Joel 3, 2, it gives us two reasons why he's gathering in there. Because as I've mentioned before, they've scattered my people and they've divided my land. That's what they're doing today, friends. They're trying to push the Jewish people to making a peace with a people that will not recognize their right to exist. And they're trying to divide the land. And that those land divisions began in 1937. We didn't see land divisions in the time of uh, the Babylonians and the Assyrians and the Medes and Persians and the Greeks and the Romans and so forth. No, we see it in our day. In our day. You know, look, if you will, at Obadiah. Obadiah. Verses 15 onward to the 21, that hasn't been fulfilled yet. It says, for the day of the Lord. There again, speaking of the time of Jacob's trouble that is to come. It says, it's near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto, the, unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. God means business. God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But there's going to come a time, friends, where his patience, where his patience is going to end. And so, friends, that's all the time we have for today. We'll conclude that chapter the next time we get together. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting close to the end of the book. Um, and uh, it's an incredible thing that when you see, when, when God finally comes back to rescue the remnant of his people, Israel, that you're going to see there when we make our way to that 14th chapter, that all the saints come with him.
Wow, God is amazing. And as sure as he created the heaven, the sun, the moon, the stars, and all of the creation in this world, including you and I, rest assured that God's word will come true. And so watch who you're fighting against because God has a special love in his heart for the land and where he has placed his name forever. So friends, it's all the time we have for today. If you like this video on my Facebook page or YouTube channel, just give it a like and share it with all your friends. And so until next time, shalom and God bless.